All right. So I want to lead us into um, one of the last pieces we're going to need before we can actually start uh, thinking about how vectors and multivariables can work into calculus. So we have met the algebra or the equations for two types of surfaces. We have uh, the sphere, you know, a circle with a belt on it for my simple sketches. We've met the plane, and if the plane fits nicely, I could use a triangle to represent the plane at the uh, in the first octant or other octants if I tried to. We're going to now uh, meet a collection of other types of surfaces. And so in this segment, we're going to study one type in particular. And those are called cylinders. Now, if you know anything about the word cylinder, um, here would be an example of a cylinder. Whoa, it's going to roll off my paper here. Okay. Um, it's got a circle cross section and it has a length. And they come in other, other sizes. A few months ago, this type of cylinder might have been quite valuable if it was still full. Um, we're not talking about what's inside. We're talking about the surface, around the, around the surface. So if you're starting to have second semester calculus nightmares of rotating by disc and shells, that could come into play in what we're about to study, but that's not how we're going to study it. So, so relax a little bit. So those are cylinders. And it turns out those aren't the only kind of cylinders. If you're talking to somebody outside of this third semester calculus world, cylinders are those shapes I just moved off to the side. Let me read you the book's definition and pause momentarily. We're not going to memorize this because I have a paraphrase that will work. So here's the definition of a cylinder. It says, let C be a curve in a plane. Parabolas are curves. Okay. And let L be a line not in a parallel plane. So the line can't be on this plane or just like one floor above it. Um, so let's just say, for example, the line comes straight off of the paper, like our normal vector would be. Okay, so there's a line. If we find other lines that are parallel to this one and they go through that curve. All right, so like I could do one here, I could do one here, I could do one here. You can't see this, my hands are in the way. Imagine this parabola were to shift and stretch outside of the paper. That set of points is called a cylinder. So I paraphrase it for my students this way. Think two dimensions. I'm going to abbreviate that. And these stretch into the third dimension. So a circle cylinder stretches off the paper into this direction. And so the way we, we're going to look at this equation is we're going to think of it as, um, well, let's go back to old school um, algebra here. When we had x equals 3, so this is the two-dimensional problem. X equals three was a point on the x-axis in one dimension, but in two dimensions, it stretched forever in the y direction. And in three dimensions, it's a plane. It's a plane that's three units in the x direction from the origin. What we're looking at is taking a two-dimensional shape and we're going to stretch it. So for example, um, if we were to look at first example here, x squared plus y squared equals 9, we would see 
a circle radius 3. Now imagine this circle stretches forever in the third dimension. y-axis, nope. Yeah, I will, I'm going to call this the x-axis. Call this the y-axis. We'll call this z. So that circle surface stretches forever in this third dimension. Now, we are sketching. And my pictures are the perfect concept of the Street Smart version of the word sketchy. This picture is sketchy. And you might say, um, Professor, you switched the axes around. Well, you're right. I did switch the axes around because I don't know if I could draw it. Could I do it this way? Maybe I can. So there's a short cylinder. And that's the z-axis. And that's the y-axis. And that's the x-axis. has a radius of 3 down here. Uh, now, this surface should keep going upwards and downwards, but drawing arrows on graphs like this are not easy to do, and there are plenty of graphs that we never drew arrows on. The sine and cosine graphs are great examples. So think two-dimensional graph that stretches into the third dimension for the concept of a cylinder. So let's look at a couple of other cylinders. More than a couple. Whoops. All right. X squared plus Z squared equals one. There we go. You could just draw a circle. radius is 1. Call this the x-axis and call this the z-axis. And then we just need to find a way to stretch it forever in the third dimension. So you can either try to stretch it this direction or you could try to stretch it backwards. And I allow my students to sketch a cylinder and some of our other graphs you don't have to have your axes in where this is X and this is Y and this is Z. You can rearrange the axes, draw the sketch first, and then put axes on it afterwards. If you want to give it a go, you could certainly try to draw this cylinder So there's your Y axis and there's your x-axis, and there's your z-axis, and the radius is a uh, one. You're welcome to do that. We're looking at the surface itself, not the inside of this. Most of our work in second semester calculus was about volume calculations. We only briefly talked about surface area. We are just looking right now at the surface itself. What is its three variable equation? So, you ready? Let's check this one out. Z equals Y squared. So, the way I counsel my students is draw the two dimensions. Notice we're missing the third variable. We do not have X. It's not there. Okay. So, let's just suppose, well, let's let Z equals Y squared. So there is Z, and there is Y, and here is my X. So we're going to then stretch this graph forever in the X direction. Um, there is an X in this equation, plus zero X. It's there. So X could be one, two, three, four, five, but no matter what the x value is, you're still going to graph a parabola. So we'd want to stretch this parabola along the x-axis. So 
So try to draw parallel pictures and connect a couple of arcs. This would be the cylinder that is like a parabola half shape. This is like a half pipe if you're a skateboarder or snowboarder type. I could be more creative and go x equals 4 minus z squared and say, oh, this is like an upside down parabola. This parabola looks like this. And then we're going to stretch it forever in the third dimension. What is the third dimension in this case? Oh, that would be the y direction. And so since x equals, and I just look, the parabola looks like this. That would be x, and that would be z if we were sketching this in two dimensions. So that would be z, and that would be x. And if you'd like to try to draw it, so your axes are oriented x, y, and z, be my guest. But you might find this is tougher for some graphs than for others. I think I could sketch this if I had to, but I'm sharing that you could leave your picture like this one. I suppose there's probably something back here I should be able to see, but I'm kind of blind when it comes to drawing these. Let's look at another one. How about y equals the square root of z. You remember there's a pause button. You could have stopped me a moment ago. Rewind it. Don't just watch somebody draw it. Watching an episode doesn't count as learning. Get your hands dirty. Maybe use a pencil, not a pen. y equals the square root of z. I do apologize to my students with actual artistic skills. This is a little play things for some of you. Y equals square root of Z. So I'm gonna just do my two dimensional picture. So Z and Y, and we got the square root graph. And then I wanna somehow stretch this graph forever in the X direction. So let me show you a little trick, a little technique that you could use. Draw a point out here in the x-direction and draw a array or a line that's parallel to the z-axis and try to draw this graph down here. Connect those two arcs and there it is, your little quarter pipe that stretches up. This is not as clear a picture maybe as this one, but I would tolerate this. Now, if you change the order of the axes at all, and this, my students, is the standard that we use. If you don't label your axes, I'm assuming that you're using this order, X, Y, Z. If you make any changes at all, label them. You gotta label two of the three, so I know what all three of them are. So X didn't change, but Y and Z were in reverse order here. Now let's just peek at one more and we'll wrap this segment up. Y equals sine of X. That sounds like the graph that we've met before. We'll draw one full period or cycle of the graph. Uh, X and Y and Z. I like this one. This is what, what it looks like when you grab your blanket and you kind of shake it really fast. It's going to look like this graph. Draw a line parallel to your x-axis. And we'll draw some segments here parallel to the z-axis as well. And then bada bing, bada boom. There it is, your sine graph surface. Simple. Just to convey the message, now we're going to meet a few other types of surfaces, but we're going to end this segment with just these cylinders. Until next time.